Hey guys, welcome back to the Golang and React Calorie Tracker application. Here in this video, this uh, I want this to be the last video for the backend side of things, and we have uh, four functions remaining. So we have add entry and get entries by ingredient, upgrade and ingredient not update entry, and it looks very um, challenging to be able to do all these four in just one video because we still have these errors remaining. So maybe maybe I'll do these functions right now and handle errors with the front end. Um, anyhow, let's get started at least. Let's not waste time. So uh, we'll start working with the add entry function. So I'll say uh, context cancel and then I'll create my context with uh, my uh, you know timeout with 100 seconds. I'll take a variable called entry. I'll access my models, my models being, uh, you know, what I've just created here. So the way you access a model uh, a struct in, a, in another package is by writing the name of the package and then writing the name of the model. So in case you want to check it out, our um, struct was called entry with a capital E and this is what I'm referencing here. When I try to save it, hopefully it should get that package for me. Yeah, so it was able to get go react calorie tracker IT models, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so you want to use the bind JSON, the very common bind JSON function, and why you use it is because you get some data uh, in the in the request body, which will be the data for the entry, but that will be JSON data, and you want that JSON data to be converted into something that GoLang understands, which is based on this struct, and you want. Uh, you've already told Golang that hey, with JSON, this is what it's going to look like, and you need to convert it into this so that we, we can you know work with this, and that's exactly what we're doing with uh, binding JSON. Uh, so you can say here if error equals to, and you can handle the here, error here itself. So here is not equal to nil, and we'll say c dot JSON. And we'll print out the error. Okay. So thankfully, today tab nine is saving a lot of time for us. And now, now that we've done this, we want to um, add one more thing to this object. We want to add an ID to this object. So we'll use primitive package and the new object ID function for that. And we'll get a new ID for this new uh, <coughs> entry that we're creating. And we'll simply use the entry collection. And we'll use the standard function that you get, the insert one function for MongoDB. If you've worked with MongoDB, you already know this. And we're just going to insert the entry. Uh, but I have missed one thing. I've missed one thing. I will validate the struct call entry and I will check if there's a validation error or not. And this validation error, I'll handle it. So I'll say if error, sorry, if validation error not equal to nil, I want to uh, print out this only basically, but the instead of error, I'll print out validation error. And we'll print it out as well. So we'll print out the validation error. And you want to return. Now this validate package, also I'm expecting Golang to be able to pick it up properly. Was it able to? No, it wasn't able to. Basically, I'm using, I want to be using the validator v10. Um, anyhow, let's let's think about that in a, in a bit. Okay, so coming back here, we, after, after validating it, we'll create our entry ID and then we'll insert one. And here, whatever gets inserted, we'll get a result from there or we might get an insert error. And you want to handle that insert error. So we'll say if insert error not equal to nil 
firstly we obviously want to uh, copy and paste this part and for the error we'll just output a message and message is something that we'll create here so it's a message fmd.sprintf order item was not created and then you want to say fmd.println insert error cool return defer cancel and if everything went well you want to say status okay and you want to return the result which was this it came from uh, inserting into the database all right so add entry is done now let's worry about our get entries um, actually let's worry about update entry and then let's handle the other two so in the update entry you will say entry id so params dot by name and id doc id will be equal to we'll use our primitive package again and entry id and i will create my context timeout so i'll just copy and paste that same thing here and then i will create a entry with models dot entry i'll do the same thing i'll just bind with json so i need that from here copy and paste this whole thing here okay and then we'll also validate because we're getting um, getting data when you're updating something you're sending the entire data the new data for that uh, you know for that data point that exists in the database and this is why you have to kind of follow the same structure uh, in the in the function that you would for a post or a create function so here you'll say entry collection dot replace one and whatever comes from here you'll capture that in a variable called result uh, and there could be this error also this error so we'll handle that error right now so it's error not equal to nil so c dot json print out the error like send the error in response and then also print out it in the terminal and return so you defer cancel and if everything went well you want to say c.json hdp.status okay and you want to return result dot modified count result being what you got back from replace one function and this is what we want to work on now so our replace one function has context has uh, sorry so this is why i hate these extensions they try to or complete something else which i clearly not want to type um, so for replacing something you obviously want to send the id of that and then you want to send the data so I'll send the id along with the new data that you want to get replaced in the database so we'll say pson.m again again this is troubling me so we have um, according to our model we have to send dish fat ingredients and calories that's what we'll do so we'll say dish fat ingredients and calories 
for dish it's called entry dot dish fat it's called entry dot fat for ingredients it's called entry dot ingredients cal it's called order sorry entry dot calories and here you'll put a comma so this was your update entry function now um, I think two functions are remaining update ingredient and get entries by ingredient but update uh, update ingredient should be very similar to what we just did because we're just updating the ingredient uh, of that particular entry ingredients okay so here again we'll do uh, this part is common and instead of entry we'll just have to create ingredient but after that also some parts will be common so I'll just copy and paste them for now instead of entry we'll um, use ingredient and ingredient will basically start off from this so we'll say ingredient is a struct which basically has ingredients using a star here because this is what we're going, going to send so we have to refer it and in JSON is going to look like this so in this function when you're calling this function this route which leads to this function sending the ingredients which are going to look like this in JSON but we want Golang to understand this that's all part of the ingredient struct and when we create a variable for us to use called ingredient we want to use we want to say that it's of type ingredient struct and this is how we were able to also bind JSON. Um, now simply you want to use entry collection and the update one function to pass the context and the ID of the data point to edit or update and we'll say equal to doc ID that we just worked on out here what you might get back will be result error and um, along with this don't close this round bracket yet along with this you have to also pass the data because along with the ID Want to pass the data that you want to update it with so that will be um, dollar set Ingredients will be equal to ingredient dot ingredients. When we say ingredient, ingredients drive off uh, struct ingredient which has ingredients. So when we say ingredient dot ingredients, this is what you're referring to the ingredients that this function just received from the body. This is what you're referring to here. And ingredients here is the um, the actual value uh, in the database of the column which is ingredients. So this will become equal to uh, ingredient dot ingredients, which we are sending right now. Dollar set is a standard um, you know, operator that you get in the update one function with uh, MongoDB. All right. After this, you will handle the error. This header you'll handle here. So let's say if error is not equal to nil, you want to um, say c dot json and return return the error print the error and then return from the function itself defer cancel
Um, and we'll also return, we'll actually return just the modified count. So instead of returning the result, return the modified count. So that was that was our um, update ingredient function. And now, now we'll work with uh, the get in entries by ingredient. So let's move on to the next function. We'll, we'll take care of all these red lines in a while, don't worry. Let's move on to the next function, which is also the last function, get entries by ingredient. So here, what we will do is we'll say ingredient will be equal to params by name ID. And because we want to get uh, it by the ingredient ID. And then we'll create our background context. To get the entries, we'll create a variable called entries. And this is what we'll be returning from this function at the end. So we can write that from this function at the end, we'll return entries. And in between is where the magic will happen. So we'll say entry collection dot find cdx comma bson dot m and instead of passing an empty object like we pass an empty object for finding getting all the entries then we pass the id to get uh, just that one particular entry by id and now we will pass the ingredients instead and that we'll have here an ingredient and uh, we can capture this in a variable called cursor. And we might get an error out here. So we'll say if error is not equal to nil, c.json. Internal server error. We'll use the FMT package to print out the error as well after returning it. And we'll return from this function. Now we'll say if error is equal to cursor dot all goal over all the entries. And here also we'll uh, print the error again. and what these lines will copy. So we're basically, uh, you know, bringing all of those in this entries variable. This is what we want to return. And here we'll say defer cancel and print out the entries as well. to the terminal so that we know if there's any issue, we'll be able to catch it here. Okay, so this is it. These are all the functions. Uh, we have done all the functions and in the next video, we'll start with the front end and we'll also um, fix these issues. Uh, I mean, I, I should have actually kept them over uh, a couple of videos and I you know did everything in one video. It's not, I don't think it's recommended. <laughs> So, uh, so we've, we're done with the back end. We'll fix these small issues in the next video, or at least we'll start working with the front end and we'll, you know, we'll figure it out. All right, guys. So thanks a lot for watching. We are getting somewhere now. We're, we're done with like at least 50% of the project because 50% is back end. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.